live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Washington, D.C. for a special presentation of theCUBE, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise, Oracle, Cloud World, here in D.C., right in the center of all the action, certainly government and also their existing customers. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Amit Zavery, Senior Vice President of Oracle Cloud Platform. Welcome to theCUBE, good no, to see you, you again. No, always lovely to be here. I love uh, getting access to all the, the minds at Oracle because you're on the product side, so you're in the, in the, the boiler room of the development. No, and definitely. the transformation of Fusion middleware, now obviously the software is a service business, that's the software industry, being absolutely disrupted by the cloud. Yes. You guys have put everything together, um, and before we get to the announcement, give us an update on uh, the cloud strategy uh, that you guys laid out uh, over the years, and specifically Oracle Open World, what, where are we? What's the strategy? Sure, sure. So if you look at where we are, I mean, we have been working in the cloud space for many, many years, right? And we started with software as a service, providing application in the cloud. Uh, then we have been building over the last six, seven years our platform and infrastructure as a service. So it's pretty much the way, way we will be looking at is to provide a full end-to-end -end cloud offering, where customers can start with our application, extend those applications using a platform, and run any non-Oracle workload on our infrastructure or use Oracle workload on our infrastructure as well. So that, that way the customers don't have to go and find different different vendors for different pieces of it and bring them, bring them together and integrate them, which can be very, very challenging and very difficult. So today we are pretty much complete. We have a very broad set of functionality, very deep in terms of uh, the, the, each, each of the services we provide, and best in class in each and every area. So and that's always been our goal, and that's where we are delivering today. Thousands of customers adopting it today. You saw the Q3 results. Very, very exciting times, and we're seeing a great, great uptake. So Mark Hurd, when I interviewed Mark Rice, are you guys cloud ready? We're 100% cloud ready. You know, a lot of bravado, but that's the case, right? So I want you to talk about the concept you introduced at Oracle Open World around um, having the cloud on premise because this is a service and it's now called Oracle Cloud at Customer, which yes. means at the customer data center. It's not software that they're buying, packaged software. It's as a service. This is the big deal. Why is this important? Yeah. What is the ramifications of impact to customers? What is the announcement? Why sure. is it important to impact the customers? So as I said, I mean, we have had thousands of customers who are using a public cloud today. Uh, they use it for various, re uh, various reasons, either developer tests, production, workloads, or doing their own high availability or extra excess capacity they need. But there are a class of customers who have a lot of regulatory requirements. Uh, who are having data privacy issues or data residency requirements. They might want control. Uh, they don't want to put their, public, uh, their key information in the public cloud, but they love the benefit of the public cloud. They love the agility, quick ROI, low TCO, subscription-based pricing, uh, use, pay for what you use. So how do you now provide that kind of capabilities to customers, but bring it to their own data center so they can have the full control and they have the ability to save their content behind the firewall and present, have all the regulatory requirements met. So that's really what we, we thought over the last few years talking to our customers. We want to bring the public cloud to them if they can't come to the public cloud in many cases. So this opens up opportunity for classes of customers where they can get all the public cloud benefits and uh, be able to use that very, very quickly. Uh, and we manage it, we run it, and customers don't have to do anything themselves in terms of operational. And we keep the two things in sync. It's exactly 100% compatible, same software. So you, can, you don't have to worry about moving workloads back and forth and you don't have to do any retesting. So it's a very unique concept uh, and very differentiated and lets our customers really benefit from the advantages we have created in the public cloud onto their own premise now. Is it, is it fair to say, I mean you guys, are, your marketing of cloud has been relatively recent, but you've been in cloud for a while with your SaaS products. Yeah. Is it fair to say that the typical customer engagement model was through SaaS, and then how do you see that changing as you start to coalesce a strategy around infrastructure as a service and platform as a service and of course SaaS through integration. Talk about that a little bit. Sure, sure, so we definitely started with SaaS, but we've been in the background working because SaaS also uses our platform and infrastructure pieces we've been building. So a lot of this team got tested as part of the SaaS anyway. And as you know, we have a very large portfolio on a platform with database, a middleware portfolio with uh, Java uh, integration products, onto, uh, BI products. So all those things we've been working on and bringing it to the cloud for the last five, six years. Now with the SaaS customers who want to extend their application, 
and be able to add other non-Oracle applications to their, to their ecosystem, they can do that very quickly, easily with the platform and infrastructure. So that's what we're bringing into the, the cloud and making it very easy for customers to access that and use it in the, in the same cloud environment as they were doing the SaaS as well. And that's what's really, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's really is what's different about your model and what you're announcing with the Oracle Cloud Machine is we've seen attempts to create homogeneity both on-prem and, and off-prem, but either they didn't affect the operations model or very importantly, they didn't affect the application development piece. Talk about that piece of it, that application development, the whole DevOps you know, yes, narrative. Sir. So I think the, the, the big advantage and the efficiency which we have built in the public cloud is to be able to automate a lot of the things. So when we add a new data center, for example, in the public cloud, or we add more machines, there's not extra cost associated with that other than the hardware. Because we, uh, the automation, the, man, the work we did, the manual part is taken out. The marginal it's cost is zero. Zero, pretty much, right. So now if we now extend that same model, and I bring the same software, same capability, to a customer site of the data center of their choice, I can still get the same efficiencies. Where customers themselves, they had to run it, it cost them a lot more money because the DevOps, they were to build out, they were to do the whole end-to-end -end integration. We have done that already. So we treat this new service we have as an extension of a public cloud. So uh, for us, it's much lower incremental cost. But the customer, the benefits are in, uh, uh, tremendous because they are getting all the DevOps automation, they're getting all the services we have built for public cloud automatically available to them, and they pay only for things they use. So they're getting the benefit of this uh, the pricing model as well, and uh, the latest innovation at their own data center. We were talking off camera, I, I shared with you, Amit, that we just released a study on Wikibon that showed that about $200 billion in, in, in spending on operational costs is going to go away into vendor R&D. Where's that money going to go? Are companies going to drop it to their bottom line? Are they going to shift it to other areas of value? Um, yeah, I think the money, one is definitely going to be savings, so they can definitely give it back to the shareholders, is one. The second thing, of course, they will probably invest in areas which are going to differentiate them versus the IT services they were probably investing in earlier. So maybe new applications, or maybe automating a lot of the different things where they had siloed applications, now they can put, invest time in bringing them together to, to improve their business efficiencies which they couldn't do before, they were still trying to solve the underlying infrastructure problem in many cases. So the money will be used in a lot more valuable uh, investments for the company versus in a lot of the low-end stuff which they can take out and automate through our public cloud offerings. Your, your logo slides are impressive. There's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Now of course, as I said, a lot of that is of course SaaS, uh, but you show infrastructure as a service which is relatively new. You show hundreds of examples yes. there as well. Some of that I'm sure came through acquisition. So, what are some of your favorite examples? Now, if you look at our customers, I mean, we have various sets of customers. In the platform infrastructure, I'll give an example of Calyx, for example. Mm -hmm. they, you wouldn't heard of them because they are like the back-end provider of all the broadband networks. All the chips you see at Comcast uh, cable modems or you see it from uh, AT&T, Calyx provides them. They're the number one leader in that space. And what they had a problem was they had a lot of siloed applications. Uh, they needed to kind of bring them together and automate uh, the whole business processes so they can be much more efficient. And they, what they were looking for is a system where the platform they can install, they can run their application very quickly and integrate them very quickly. So they, they chose our platform as a service offering, integration, a Java, a database, and now they're using that as the underlying technology for all their applications. They replaced a lot of other point vendors, including Dell Boomi, for example, with the Oracle platform. But you, now they're expanding out to our infrastructure services, uh, all the different things we have in the platform for BI, so the use cases just gets bigger and bigger once they start picking up some of these things. So that example, on a scale of one to 10, how much of a heavy lift is that for customers, 10 being a very heavy lift? Not much, I mean, the, for them, the, it's all compatible to the most of the standards. We can support Oracle workloads, non-Oracle workloads. We provide adapters to a lot of Oracle and third-party applications. They're using Oracle apps, they're using salesforce.com, they're using Adobe, and we can integrate them out of the box today. So we provide those adapters and connectivity. It's not just Oracle ecosystem at all. Very low heavy lift. Okay, talk about the dynamics. Is one of the things that's coming up is that um, you guys certainly have a great message for the CXO people who are budgeting integration costs, being more agile. This is a huge initiative yes. for anyone at the C level suite or the builders, the architects. But the new role of the developers changing. Also, the developers are key. So developers and the people who fund the projects. Sure. Because agile is the preferred <laughs> method. What's the, the role of the developer? It's changed a lot. Full stack is the table stakes. 
How do you see that evolving and what's Oracle doing for the developers? Yeah, I think the developers are becoming kind of the, the spear, at the top of the spear now, right? So I think the, a few years ago, a lot of things were driven from top down where the, the IT groups so or CIOs would decide, this is the stack I want you to use, now go figure out how to use it. More and more now with the ability to get all of the services available to them in real time without having to provision or wait for IT, developers are getting much more proactive and quick, quick access to build applications. So as a vendor like Oracle, we've been of course very close to developers for years. I mean, we, that's our DNA. And we are now able to provide them the full stack they need to build any application with the choices of they might make. So it doesn't have to be the programming language we like, but they can choose theirs, right? They can choose Java, they can use Node, they can use Python, they can use Ruby. It's really up to them. They use different frameworks. Uh, so that it becomes very straightforward for them as a developer to choose what is more important to them for their application development and uh, build their application very, very quickly. So we address them very, uh, very aggressively. And, and, that and what's their role in this new on-premise cloud play with the cloud? Because they have to build the apps, they're on the front lines. Yes. So the, they all want to now start building application in the cloud. They might decide the deployment can be a different, different decision versus development. See, in many cases with a lot of the vendors, the development and de deployment has become very synonymous and together. You need to decouple that because you don't want to be tying the, custom, uh, the developer or your customers to the point where I build this, I have to run it here. I should be able to make my change in my mind or make a decision based on my business needs. So what we have done with our offering for developers is to really make sure we have a stack where you build the application and you get to choose on-premise, hybrid, uh, cloud deployment and change your mind whenever you choose to. And that's what our developers have been li loving uh, that concept. And they're the drivers for Agile, right? Basically, the exactly. developers drive the speed of the, of the boat, if you will, in yes. this case. Um, great, so final question for you. The show here, for the folks watching, um, obviously a lot of customers, you guys do a lot of customers at the, on the stage, we had Avaya on earlier. What's the vibe of the show here? for Oracle Cloud World this year? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, I came in in the morning today uh, uh, and I was ama amazed at the amount of people out here. The keynote room was packed, uh, the standing room barely, uh, as well as if you look at it around us, I mean, uh, uh, this is just like another mini open world. And it's always exciting to see a customer show up and want to hear what we are doing and work with them together. Final, final question, what is the what can people expect from Oracle in the cloud game as you guys go forward with the products? Just some quick, quick sound bite on what to expect from Oracle. I think you, you, you'll see a lot of these uh, services getting more and more uh, functionality as we keep on going based on the requirements we see from our customers. Uh, the adoption has been amazing, so I think the use cases are evolving as we speak. Uh, a lot of uh, customers are running production workloads, they want this hybrid model. So I think more and more use cases like that you, you should expect and more and more services uh, to bring our whole full platform to the cloud. It's early days, congratulations. I mean, Xavier, he's the SVP of the cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud Platform. Again, he's on the product side, he's in the boiler room, engine room, making it all happen. Thanks for sharing your insights uh, of course, no. here on theCUBE. Back more with live coverage here on the ground, live in DC for theCUBE. We'll be right back at Oracle Cloud World after this short break.